Leviticus 23, starting at verse 5. And in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of the unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come unto the land which I give unto you, ye shall reap the harvest thereof. Then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. And here we are today, saints. The priest shall wave it, and ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf. And then he lay him without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tent deals of the flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering shall drink offering thereof shall be of wine and the forepart of an hymn. And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your dwell your throughout your generation and all your dwellings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our next scripture reading will be Ecclesiastes ten and verse seventeen. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season, for strength and not for drunkenness. By much slothfulness the building decayed, and through idleness of the hands the house dropping through. A feast is made for laughter, and wine make it merry, but money answereth all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our last scripture reading. Just to encourage you all. Psalms 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swaddled us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowls. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Shalom to you, all saints. Saints, once again, we welcome you tonight. Um, we greet you with shalom. Um, hope you all are really, truly, truly enjoying the feast. Uh, as the word tells us to do this thing joyfully and we're rejoicing um, for this is something that we're going to have to do in the latter days in the world tomorrow as dad always says uh, so we might as well get our practice in now so because we're going to have to keep the feast regardless um, so let us do this with rejoice re with happiness joyfulness all with, with, with the words say fully persuaded saints fully persuaded that God is able to do everything that he said he was doing so uh, we're gonna go right into our song service so those of you who would like to sing we ask you to come on up
Hallelujah.
see it, you're going to make it through it all. I knew they were all sure to say. All I'm sure that we're going to make it. We bless God. So come on, lift your hands toward the heaven and give us a shout of hallelujah. Worthy of it, he's worthy of it, he's worthy of it. We praise him on today. Listen, we're going to get ready to get into the word of God. I do apologize for uh, being uh, uh, starting you guys a little late, but listen, I won't listen. I, I give you my word here. I'm going to have you out here in just a few minutes. I know we were supposed to start some stuff, have your meal before. Kind of pressed with time. Mother Fanny B, she didn't get to come up here and help me, so we was pressed with a little bit of time, and neither did the rest of you all either. <laughs> But uh, listen, we're going to get ready to get right into the Word of God. And uh, listen, I, I give you my word again. We won't be long. I want you to get back and relax. Those especially that have to work tomorrow, uh, we're grateful for it. To all of you all that's already viewing us, Sister Michelle Jones, God bless you, Miss Thompson, and um, uh, uh, to my aunt, Aunt Sherry, all that's our Lakeisha, our daughter Lakeisha, all that's already viewing us. We bless God for you on tonight. We won't be long at all. I want to get right into this. On today, I want to talk about some things that I was going to talk about on yesterday and didn't get a chance to. But what I talked about yesterday, I pray that it was good for you. I pray it was a blessing for you. I pray it was hope for you and it gave you encouragement on today. We we appreciate you. Some of a guy that had work and 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 so forth. But um, we're going to move right along. And uh, daughter, hey, will you give me that give me that that message right there? And she giving you guys. You kind of bear with us. Uh, we're getting everything situated. Uh, let us pray. Turn to God, our Father, Abba, we come before you in the name of Emmanuel. So grateful and thankful again, Father, for this golden opportunity that you've given us, Father, as we get rid of this. Sadly, I say, bring this unliving bread down to an end. But you've given us this time to share in your holy word. Truly, your word is powerful. Your word is holy. Your word is, is, is everything that we need it to be and do in our life, Father. It is a sanctifier. It is a healer. It is a deliverer. Father, it is a way, Father. It is a light. Your word is so many things in our life, Father. And we thank you for all that you have done with it. Father, I bless you for how you've given me to exalt and teach your holy word, to proclaim the good news, the good news of righteousness and holiness and salvation to all, Father, that they may have hope, that they might be healed, delivered, set free, blessed, whatever the need be may be, and just to be able to live a life of wholeness. I bless you for it on today. I thank you for the high calling. Thank you for... Father, choosing me and anointing me and sanctifying me, filling me and establishing me to be holy. All of what you did, giving me your love, your anointing, your power, your glory. Everything that you put and invested within this earthen vessel, this tabernacle. Abba, I praise you for it. I glorify your name. For I know I couldn't do these things without you. Father, I thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding over it all. Father, I bless you. Again, I know that I couldn't do it without you. But with you, Father, as the, as, the, as, the, as the writer said, I can do all things through the anointed one that strengthened me. And then that same anointed one, my God, he's going to supply my every need. And that's why I don't be anxious for nothing. But I take everything even now by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So I praise you. I thank you. Thank you for my brethren. Thank you for the woman that anointed the feet of our living Savior. Thank you for our sisters. And thank you for all these that are viewing us. We praise and glorify your name by saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the most high. In Emmanuel's name, amen. Listen, we bless God for you. Uh, I want to talk just for a few, 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 few for every minute. Sometimes our minds are disturbed in and out about different things. But I want to talk about the power of the cross for just for a few minutes. And then to those that have diminished the power of the cross. Not You didn't take anything away from the cross. You took away from you. When I said this, this, this minister, the power of the cross, I want you to get this. I want you to listen. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be before you long. And anybody, it don't make no difference if it be my mom or my daddy. In this season, in this time, as often as you have opportunity to stand before anybody, it should be for edification of the saints. And it don't make no difference who you are. And when you don't take it and do it that way, sometimes you hurt and harm yourself. Except God's mercy will step in for you. And you better pray that it do. So I want to talk to you for just a few moments on the power of the cross. And let's see if I can make it, help it to work for you. 
The power of the cross. Let me see if I can help it work for you. See, these things, a lot of these things are not manifested. And I know they're not. And I say that sadly. They're not, they don't manifest themselves in the lives of so many people. And I want to try to help you today. All because I love you and I care for you. Sanctify itself. Could have put another word there, but I want to help you today. And I wasn't talking to you all. I was just talking to other people that, that uh, you know who they know if they listen. They know who I'm Let's start this on one, one of our foundational scriptures in Leviticus, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, and I pray that all of you all, uh, 11, 11, uh, 11. Uh -huh. so you uh, and 26. Uh, now we're coming right on back over oh, okay. there. I'm going to start 11 and 26, and then I'm coming right back to him. We got to visit them twice. I want to show you what I'm talking about here. You know, people have made the cross of Christ of non-effect. And it was supposed to be so powerful for saints. And this is why the scripture said that we're going to boast in anything. And we're going to read it in a minute here. And in, 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 uh, uh, did I have that on that paper? Yes, sir. It's on there. It's just down here. Where is it at? Yeah, okay, I got Galatians 6 on there. I don't see it on my paper. Oh well, let's let make sure I, I go off of that. But let's start with let's start with uh, let's start with the other one. But I definitely want to go off of that. Like I said, uh, uh, let's start this in in in, in eleven and eleven and uh, first Corinthians eleven and twenty six. I want to like I said, the power of the cross, and most people have made it a non effect. And you didn't hurt the cross. What Christ did, in other words, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in this. Word. You didn't hurt him at all when you didn't exalt him in this season. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Read it, brother. First Corinthians 11 and 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's <laughs> death till he come. Now, all of that happened at the cross, saints. And that's when they couldn't kill him, saints. He laid his life down for people like you and I. And we deserve this, saints. Amen? Hallelujah. And everything that his death released, everything that the cross did... We, we have access to that through the mercy seat. Amen, saints. We know when, the, when, the, when he gave up the gold, the Bible said that the veil was split from the top to the bottom. And we won't allow this to be made mockery of. Galatians 6 and, and number 14. 14 says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the Christ of our Lord <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go, do it again, son. But God forbid that I should glory. I don't have any business glorying in anything. I haven't esteemed myself past my brothers. I'm not above sin. I'm not a reproach. Repro none of those things. And that's why whatever we do has got to be did in love. The Bible, Marquette taught a message. He that wins souls must be wise. wise. Bless you. Yes, sir. So if I'm going to boast in anything, can't be anything but the cross. So I want to help you for a few minutes. Read it. Yeah. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. All that you can boastify is in the cross of Emmanuel, the anointed one. And if it's, if it's not you bragging about what his blood did and everything that his death released, you can, you, can, you, can, you can keep your mouth closed, really. Other than that, saints. Make no difference how well you've known or any of those other things. If it's not about what he did, what his death released, what the cross did for you, it's all in vain. Let's look at it. Where we're going? First Corinthians 1 and 17. Mm -hmm. Let's read it. Look at it. I'll show you. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. God, what did he send me to do, son? Do it but, again. But for Christ sent me not to baptize. Now, other people have a message of ministry of doing this and prophecy of doing this. Everybody have their own little ministry. Most of them started their own. Because if you were called by God, it's only for the edifying of the saints and, and all of this until we all come into the unity and the knowledge of God. Everybody, find that scripture in there for me in, in Ephesians. For the edifying of the body and, and edifying and of the saints. Edifying for the saints and glorifying of the body and all of till we come into the unity and knowledge. See, everybody's not on the same level. And I would be a fool. Couldn't call myself a preacher, man of God, to tear down somebody up because they're not on my level. I didn't start off where I'm right here, right here. I started off with a portion of it, giving all the measure of his spirit, a measure of faith. I started off with the measure of faith, but 
utter this, the, uh, the rest of this, I didn't start off right here. Should be four, Ephesians. Four and 29. It'll be Ephesians. What is it? Four and what? Four and 29. Let's turn over to Ephesians right quick. And see, when we get outside of this portion right here, saying, Read it, brother. Or do you want the uh, the one that's in uh, the uh, yeah, yeah verse that, thirteen? That's what I 13. want. Thank you, brother. Twelve. Brother. You want twelve? Okay. Yeah, eleven. Start in verse number eleven. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now it don't make no difference who you are. Hallelujah. Now what did he give all of these people for? That, that's the whole thing. For the perfecting of the saints. For what now? For the perfecting. Not the tearing down of the saints, but for the edifying or the perfecting. Making them perfect. Everybody might not be on the same level. And we all are not. Some of you guys might be having a higher anointing or a higher place to where I'm in. It don't, I don't know. It's not judged by age. Let me tell you that. Amen, mothers and fathers. Hallelujah. Read it. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all, all come. All of that, that's what it's all for. Until we what now? We all come in the unity of the faith. That's what it's all about, saints. And if you're not, you don't get it that way. I know some of my things might not be as easy to some, and it's not so much as the word is not easy. Other people, they're not doing it, and because we worship on a different day and we keep these days, people come against those things. But as far as the teaching of God that we lay before you, everything is done out of love. Yes, sir. If I speak against a pagan holiday, it's only because it's in the Bible. If I speak against Easter, it's only because it's a pagan holiday and it's, it's, it's bad for you. Other than that, it's all out of love. And I hope, like I said, my grandmother, she used to whoop us and she'd come here and tell her, come here, baby, granny love you. She'd first tell us she loved us. And she would make us hug her neck and tell us we loved her, even though I didn't want to do it at that time. But it's all done out of love. Go back over there. To First Corinthians 1 and 17. Uh-huh. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. What let the cross of Christ be what now? Should be made and of see, none so effect. Many, so many saints have put it there. What did you do to make the cross of Christ of none effect? What did you do? Do you think the Father is well pleased? Everything that his death released in this season. That we should be laying hand on and healing people and doing everything that his death released. I, I've read Isaiah 53 so many times, you all ought to be just about be able to be quote it like I can. Those are the things that his death released. Isaiah 53, 61, 63, 52, Psalm 22. All of his suffering that he went through other night was all for us. Read it, brother. Uh, this is... Isaiah 5 and 13. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 5 and verse 13. Isaiah 5 and 13. Yeah. Go ahead. Therefore my people are gone in contempt, into captivity. How in the world did they get over there? Because they have no knowledge. Now somebody wasn't doing that job. Somebody that's standing where I'm standing was not doing their jobs. Finish it brother. And their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Mm. Therefore, hell had to enlarge herself and open her mouth without measure. All of these things going on because of that. You're supposed to be edifying, building up, teaching, and preaching to the people about the power of the cross in this season. Let's look at it. First Peter. First Peter. Okay. This is First Peter 1 and verse 2. First Peter 1 and 2, look at it. I want to show you this now. First Peter 1 and 2. Elect, according to the foreknowledge. Who are you talking to, Marquette? The elect. Who are the elect? We are. Huh? We are. So he's talking directly to you. 
The elect according to what, Mark? What? According to the foreknowledge according of God. According to your understanding. That's what keeps you out of captivity. Understanding the power of the cross and not making it a non effect. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that help you and give you healing. Elect according to the foreknowledge of who, son? Of God, the Father. Through sanctification of the spirit Hallelujah. unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. This is, the, this is it, Satan. This is the power of the cross. Read the text again. And I want you to let that verse soak in. And we're almost done. Elect according to the foreknowledge mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you. What is it, son? Grace the blood unto you and peace be multiplied. Now, that's what you're supposed to get in this season, Ella Duncan, Sister Duncan. She need a mother family to be later Jim and Brother Charles and every sister Pam. This is supposed to be multiplied in your life. And I pray, I pray with everything that's within me that you have felt and taste of that. Read it, brother. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope. How did he do it, son? Had begotten us again unto a lively hope. What did he give for us? A lively hope. He give you hope. So I'll be, if I let anybody tear down what God has given me, mm -hmm. it's enough to live with the Bible said that hell and then enlarging itself in this other daily state in this. It's enough that we deal with things just with the enemy. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be doggone. And if I allow it to be just laid there. This is what I was going to teach yesterday. And the Spirit gave me that other message. Read it, son. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ How from the dead. Do it? By the resurrection of Jesus. Everything that he did on the cross, saints. And he didn't stay there. They buried him and he got up. That's the power of all of these things. Read him, brother. To an inheritance that's corruptible and undefiled and that faded not away. Hallelujah. Reserved Do it again. Do it again. to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away. Now, what do you have to worry about? He put you, the cross have put you, the, the power of the cross, of his death, burial, and resurrection have put you as something that. It's incorruptible mm -hmm. and it undefiled. Would never undefiled. What is what? And never fade and away. And it never fade away. Now, how you how what are, what are you gonna let trade? How are you gonna let somebody change that for you? Is it anything else that you need other than that? Do them again. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept by the power of God. Well, who are they kept by? By the power of God uh -huh. through faith unto salvation. Hallelujah. Ready to be revealed in the last time. What time are we living in? In the last time. It's here for you, saints. This is what this season is all about. This is what the season is all about, saints. Read it, brother. Who are kept. Mm -hmm. That's all of it. Uh, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. How I many have some heaviness there in your life? And whatever, whatever reason they come in, we read it. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish it, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory Hallelujah. at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what he told you in these late days, say. You got something to look forward to. Read it. The same, the same one that hung on the cross for you. He's coming back for you. John told you, don't be worried. Don't be letting your heart be troubled about nothing. Just believe in God. Believe also in Emmanuel. The text goes on to say, he said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I prom I'll tell you I'm coming back. And I'm waiting on it. Read it. Whom having not seen ye love, and whom, though now he now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith. What are we looking for? Receiving the end of your faith. What is it? Even the salvation of your soul. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. Second Peter one and verse two. Second Peter one and two. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. How do we get it, son? Through the knowledge of God. Of the cross, saints. This is where the power of all of these things come. Finish it. 
Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power have given unto us all things. What did it give me, Marquette? All things uh-huh. that pertain unto life now, and Now, what else do you need? If what he did on the cross of giving you all things that pertain to life and God, what else do you need? And what else can anyone take away from you? I like to listen to it every once in a while. Mr. Lee Williams, when he was living, and they still play it now, but he would sing this song. I refuse. I won't let, I won't let nothing or nobody steal my joy. And that's where I'm at, sir. In this season, my mind is on one thing, saints. My mind is on one thing, saints. We have testimony from when Lady Shanita prayed yesterday. From Jeremiah come up and I told him to lay his hand on some people. And the little child, and we have testimony from it. Do you know how good it make me feel to hear people calling me in the mo- this morning or the phone calls that I got and talk about how they was healed, pain left their bodies, and different things happened to them yesterday in prayer. You know how good that make me feel? And I know he's doing it. What verse you at? In the middle of a three. Okay, come on. I was just started over. According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness Hallelujah. through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Hallelujah. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. What did he give us, son? Precious promises. Listen, there. what else do you need? Read it. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. <laughs> Having escaped the corruption. How, what did we escape, son? Corruption. And all of the rest of the hell, too, that people try to push into your life. I tell you, you got some stuff to look forward to now. Hallelujah. In this season. Yes, sir. Read it, brother. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Mm-hmm. And beside this, giving all diligence. Through, through lust and through jealousy others, and just from others just as well. And besides this, giving all diligence. Diligence add to your faith virtue, virtue? and to your vir- to virtue knowledge. Now listen, you see what's supposed to be added and multiplied to you in this season? Ain't virtue. nothing supposed to be taken away. No, sir. Listen, I know I know the scripture. That's one thing you can't take away from me. <laughs> That's it. I know what's supposed to be going on in this season. I know what the Father have laid for you. Yes, I know what he added. Because see, if I add all of these things to you, get, get, add them up again, son, and see what the psalm of them is. Add them up. And, and besides this, given all diligence, <laughs> add to your faith virtue, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, <laughs> and to knowledge, <laughs> temperance, and to temperance, patience. If I would have stopped right there with knowledge, because it's going to produce wisdom, what in the world did Solomon ask God for? Wisdom. And, and what did Solomon gain from the one thing that he asked God for? <laughs> A whole lot. Now, I've given you a whole lot of things. Add them up, and I'm going to give you the sum of it And when he finished doing it. Go back to the verse before it and get it. And we're almost done. Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, <laughs> having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. <laughs> Hallelujah. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. You tell me the worth of it, saints. Tell me the worth of it. <laughs> These are things that the wealthy and the millionaires and billionaires, some of them don't have and they can't buy it. No, sir. Read it, brother. For if... <laughs> I like that part. For if these things be in you in a bow, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord. There you go, say. Now you see that? You see, you see how the cross will help you in this season? Read him. <laughs> that all of it? No, sir. Verse uh nine. Mm-hmm. Now that actually is it. We done been reading mm-hmm. it once supposed to. Let me give you this in our 53, and then we're gonna get ready to close you. No. How do y'all uh Isaiah 53 and 1? 53 and 1. Now I'm going to ask you this little bit of question, and then we'll skip down to verse 3, 4, and 5. Read yes, it. Sir. 
Who had to believe our report? Now, how many of y'all believe that the power of the cross is still yeah. good and available for you yes, in sir. this season? Yes, and sir. everything that he said that it would bring in with faith that it would add. Well, come on down to verse number, verse number, verse number four. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. How many believe it? Read it. Hallelujah. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement for my peace. If you don't say nothing about it, say. See, this one should be personal to you. That's, uh, that's, that's when I tell you that pain left my leg in prayer yesterday. The chest timing for my peace being laid up on him. And when they hit him, the, the 39 lashes saying, 40 say one. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm set free. I'm rich. I'm wealthy. Hallelujah. Faith. I have the knowledge, the spirit, the anointing, the power, the glory. All of these things come through what he had did. The same are forward and impressed up on you just as well for you're hearing the words of God on the night. Verse number 10 and verse number 11. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, he had put him to grief. Why, why did it please God the Father to put the son through the pain that he went through? Let me show you. Let me, I want to show you. You know what he talked about? God so loved the world that he gave somebody mm -hmm. for you. This is why I plead him. He loved me and you just that much. He loved the saints. Read it, brother. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Yeah. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Hallelujah. He shall see the travail, see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge. Do it again. By his knowledge. All of this of the cross. Say, by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many. Hallelujah. For he shall bear their iniquity. He's going to do it for us, saints. Now, what else, what, else, what else can you ask for out of all of this? Huh? What else are you looking for out of all of it? And I don't know how you feel about this this evening, but I'm grateful, saints. The power of the cross and everything that his death released into my life, everything that he did for me, I want it. God knows I'm not worried about silver and gold and fancy things. Would like to have me a nicer truck, but other than that, I'm not worried about it. And I can go get one tomorrow if I wanted it. But the Bible told me, and I don't know what's that now, but last time I checked, but the Bible told me that I was the lender and not the borrower. I hadn't been up there meddling with them people, and I don't tend to mess with them. I intend every time in these seasons, before these seasons, to fall down on my knees. If Moses, in the days when he was under the old blood covenant of the animal, if he could fall down on his knees and stop a plague that killed over hundreds of thousands, a hundred thousand people, if he could fall down on his knees and God give him an answer, if Elijah can fall down on his knees and pray and went and asked for no rain, and I can go on and on. Moses didn't even stand on fall on his knees. He stood up and he stretched out a rod that God had given him. I can go on and on with this, saints. As it relates to the saints, God, or his people, he's no respect of a person. To them, not to his. And the whole text here, what he did for all of the rest of them in this season. If I stay before him, the promise is, we read them to you yesterday. He would do these same things for you and I. Say, he's no respect of a person to the saints. And don't be deceived, saying, don't let nobody deceive you in the scripture, okay? God told Moses to tell Pharaoh. You're going to know this day that I do make a difference between other people and my people. But among his people, he never said he would make a difference between me and the Bible study group of Israel. You might separate yourself from God. <laughs> but if you don't walk off from him and walk away from what you did on the evening of the 14th, the covenant, it still stands. And made fun of that, you know, I taught the message, a righteous man might fall. He might fall, Wayne. 
Wang, if you fall, if you fall a hundred times, my brother, and it don't have nothing to do with the blood co covenant, get your back up, okay? And keep on going. God going to strengthen you. He going to be with you. Because of the blood covenant that you took, because you're called by his name, you bear his anointing, it don't make, it don't make no difference what none say, saints. See, these are the things that you got to know. The power of the cross. And you can be like others. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. So many have made the cross of none effect. And you didn't even have to. Where we at, son? Yeah. Yeah. Philippians chapter. Yes, uh, Philippians three. 3. And we have one, two little bit of scripture. And 10. Philippians 3 and 10. That's giving them time to get that out there. Philippians 3 and 10. Let's see what the scripture said. Philippians 3 and 10. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And the fellowship of his suffering. If I only knew about those things, saints. We preached it one several times. Oh, that I may know him. The power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. Why do I need to know all about that stuff that took place on the cross and from the cross to the grave? And from out of the grave to where he's living now, sitting right at the right hand of God Almighty, making intercession for me. Why do I need to know about it? Verse number three says, Being... Being made conformable unto his death. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. All for, of this stuff about his death. Read it. For we are the circumcision <laughs> which worship God in the spirit uh -huh. and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Hallelujah. Verse, That's the reason why, bro Wayne. Read it, brother. Verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yeah, doubtless, and count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. What, for what now? For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. For what, my question? For the excellency of the knowledge of and Christ. And this is why Paul said, oh, that I might know him. And see, when you know him, you can't, listen here. When you know what you got... You got a hundred dollars, got some money in your pocket, and some of you all know how to feel to have money in your pocket. And people can talk about you. They can talk about your shoes, and they can talk about everything. And it though you can smile longer, you know, man, I got enough money in my pocket, and Wayne would say to buy you. So you talking about my shoes? I got enough money in my pocket to buy you. And that's what he'll say. Same way on the spiritual side. You don't let nothing disturb you when you know what's going on in this season. Hallelujah. Where you, what, what, what you we go, we're in the middle of eight. Okay. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Do it again. Not having my own righteousness. Not building up no own stuff. I saw that in Romans chapter 10. People left the laws of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness. No, that's not good enough for me, saints. No, sir. That stuff gets you just like the people that doing doing a, the partaking of the body uh, with no understanding. Gets you sick, weak, and in the grave. Read it. Y'all pray for my hand. I don't know why it's crack, crapping. Y'all prayed for me yesterday, and then my hip stopped hurting. Y'all pray for my hand and let it stop crapping. Amen. And if I do, I might teach on another hour. So just pray for my hand. <laughs> <laughs> She went to pray and man, Shanita told her, she said, bless her, bless her. And Shanita told her, you stop praying right now. <laughs> you know what I was going to say? And, and hey, I don't have a two more scriptures. I'm done. One, I think it's one more. I was going to say, there was silence in heaven for about an hour. <laughs> that was, <laughs> and then the, <laughs> but the, I asked him to pray for me and I told him I could preach on an hour. He said, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. <laughs> Nobody said a word. Let's read it, brother, so we can finish it. I'm Which just giving is, them time to get that I'm going to start it back over now. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by All faith. All of this is faith in Christ and what he did on the cross for you, read it, or, or, or in his blood. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection and <laughs> the fellowship of his sufferings. That's all of it. That's all of it. That's all of it. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians 1 and 17. And we got one little place. I want to read that other one for myself there. 1 Corinthians 1 and 17, son. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Not with wisdom of words. Uh -huh. Least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Uh, unless what now, Mark? Least the cross of Christ should be made of That's none effect. That's what I'm here saying. 
I can't let that happen. Everything that he died for in his death relief, you're, I can't let that happen to you. For our healing, for our peace, for our love, for our hope. I can't let that happen to you. Let the cross of Christ be made of non effect. I can't let that happen to you. Verse number 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish it foolishness. <laughs> Do it again. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish it foolishness. People don't, it's foolish because they don't understand it. And as I talked about pagan holidays like Easter, it don't give you this, saints. Mm -mm. It don't give you this. There's no promises with it. There's no healing with it. There's nothing with it. And I say that out of all sincerity and truth and love. But this Passover, unleavened bread, it gives you everything that we just went over there. And listen, I just barely scratched the surface on it. Read it, brother. Read that text again. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved. <laughs> Who it is this us? You remember we started this off with the, the elect? elect? The elect. But unto? But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. What is it, son? The power of God. The power of God. And this is why. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 15 said, So as much as in me. I'm ready to preach this word of God. I'm ready to go on another seven days. It don't make no difference with me. I've enjoyed myself in this Hallelujah. feast in the presence Hallelujah. of God. I've Hallelujah. enjoyed the unleavened bread. I've enjoyed God healing people. I've enjoyed the deliver. I've enjoyed everything, saints, that he allowed us to come in. I've enjoyed the, 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 the servitude that I did in the kitchen and all of the things, the cleaning. I've enjoyed this in this season. And I pray within everything that's within me. And I know it is that he's well pleased with it. Hallelujah. For in as much as me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are here in Lamar and wherever yet. Ain't Sherry in Alabama, Lakeisha in Denver. It don't make no different way yet. I'm ready. And I leave this with you. And you can rest assured on this one. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Emmanuel, the Christ, the anointed one. Of the cross, saints. And everything that his death released in this season. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation, to everyone to believe, to Israel first, and anybody else that want to come in. For the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written. Hallelujah. I'm going to close you with what I started with yesterday. The just shall live. Bishop Smith read it out of Becca. But the just shall live by faith. I'm going to let you work on mine. Borrow mine. Habakkuk said by his faith. I'm going to stand with you, saints, as my brothers and sisters. If I need to stand in the gap, I've been praying for a lot of people. Lady Cheryl Mitchell, we ask that you keep her in your prayer. Lady Frances Boylan. All of these other people, I've been standing with and then standing in the gap and praying for, and I'm going to keep on till I see what I'm looking for. And that's what he promised. Come on, stand to your feet and give the Father a shout of hallelujah for the word of God, if you would kindly. Are you going to read? What? I know, I just quoted. Oh. You didn't hear me? <laughs> All right, now these people ready to eat. Got lamb chopping all this stuff back there. All I don't blame them. I'll be ready to eat too. And I don't even feel no way hungry, you all. Huh? Nah, I didn't taste that much. Yes, sir. Just start. I'm going to start. I didn't, I'm going to eat a little something. But listen, we bless God for you. Again, Miss Thompson, God bless you. Mother Charletta, God bless you. Ain't Sherry, God bless you. We're praying for you. Ain't Sherry, we've been praying and praying for you. All things are going to be well. Sister Emma, God bless your daughter. Sister Michelle, bless you. Bless you. Bless you, uh, my friend. Sister Tangela Williams, God bless you. Brother Joshua Mason, God bless you. Uh, Sister Portia Pitts, God bless you, sister. Brother Brandon Judge, bless you. Lady Kiana, bless you. Sister Payne uh, and family, Sister Tasha, bless you all. Michaela, Tony, 
All of you guys, bless you all. Pruitt, God bless you. Destin, McDonald, and Sister Brenda, Lizzie. Lizzie, God bless you all. Listen, we love you. The message was what, we, what I call short. Uh, huh. <laughs> it was short. It's what I call short. We are letting our people get out. Listen, for all the older viewers, we'll be back in this place tomorrow night at 7.30, and then we'll be back Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Yeah, and that will close our feast. I say that sadly. So to those of you that listen, we welcome your questions, uh, especially for tomorrow night or anything that you saw us doing. Well, excuse me, Sunday, we've been in this place since last Friday, and I think that's about almost 12 days of service. And I pray it's been good to you. I pray it's been good to you. I've did everything that I can possibly do to help you. I did. I, I hope you feel like queens and kings the way you've been treated this week. From what, you, what you've what you eaten. For the food that you've had opportunity to eat this week. Uh, we've spared no expense. And this has been an every night and every day thing, saints. We spared no expense. This is what the father wants for his sons and daughters. I pray that you enjoy what we talked to you about. The laughter, the feasting in this prophet time, the laughter, the thing that it brings forth, laughter, wine, and money. And don't give up. That's why I told you, don't give up on it. Don't give up. The season's not going to end. It's gonna, the brother's going to give you three blasts with the blowing of the shofar. I speak blessings over the food. Um... I don't feel no waste time. I just have to say that. I come too far from from nobody told me the wrong would be there. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me without lifting hands. Yeah. One more. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, come on, give God another shout of hallelujah for our brother, Ella Donkey. You've been practicing, ain't you, brother? Hallelujah. We bless God for you. Listen, we're going we're gonna to close you on uh, Tuesday at the last day of the Feast of Unliving Bread, but we bless God for you. Enjoy your food back there. We have a